So this is kind of very exciting. Uh, India Walton is basically the, the new socialist mayor of uh, New York, which is kind of cool. And uh, she beat the Democratic incumbent by like 1,500 votes. 1,500 votes is, is what she beat him by, which is, which is great because, you know, that guy has the entire Democratic machine backing him, and she probably did not. <laughs> I, would, I would wager that anybody that comes out and says that they're socialist in any manner, whether they're Democratic socialist or just outright socialist like Shama Savant over in, 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 uh, in Seattle, uh, is not really going to get backed by the party that uh, has a president who said, I beat the socialist, and, you know, is now criminalizing socialism. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think that's really, really rad. So I want to kind of go down this from the socialist program. Let me light, get the right spot here. Um, I want to play you guys this clip from the socialist program that was released earlier this week. Give me one second to set this up here. He kind of goes... And and I'll, I'll I'll kind of pause, and we'll we'll talk about some of the things that Brian Becker addresses uh, on on this program. And and it's this is not going to be a super long thing. It's a it's a few short minutes. Uh, so so this is him talking about India infrastructure Walton. plan and the different twists and turns of this story. So, but yeah, before we, we do that, I also want to just have a big shout out and congratulations to India Walton. India Walton is a lifelong Buffalo resident. She's a worker. She's a nurse. She's a socialist. She's African-American political leader in this community in Buffalo, the second largest city in New York State. A lot of attention was paid to what was going on in the primary in New York City, the Democratic primary. But India Walton won the Democratic primary in Buffalo, New York, and that means in all likelihood she will be the mayor of Buffalo come the general election. So, yeah, so she's running, uh, she's basically running unopposed. There's no Republican. That uh, she is a African-American working class nurse, Buffalo resident that has lived in Buffalo all her life. Um, she's an organizer. So this is all the things that the fucking Democratic Party loves, right? They love people of color. They love if you're from the working class. I mean, how much did they spend last year claiming that all nurses are, they're, they're our heroes, and, you know, they did a completely unnecessary $400 million fucking Blue Angels display to be like, yeah! nurses and they're like what about ppes and maybe like healthcare? and they were like no but we did the thing with the with the planes so it's it's she ticks off all the boxes and the only one that she doesn't tick off is not a socialist so the democratic machine doesn't feel the need to support her now they are claiming that they're going to support her uh going forward now that she has won Right. Uh, they're 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 like, yeah, we'll we'll uh, sure. Yeah, we'll we'll back you up or whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, uh, which I which is how I imagine them fucking saying it. Uh, they're like, yeah, it's a f sure. Fine. Why not? Yay. Um, but she does. She does take off all the boxes for the Democratic Party. But the fact that she's a, a socialist, the, the, the concern I would have is if the Democratic Party and the DSA kind of sheepdog her into the into the party itself. Everything she stands for will virtually become meaningless. Um, so I'm hoping that that's not the case. Obviously, uh, so I, I'm going to keep playing this here. People might not know it, but the socialist movement, which is reviving now and has been reviving in the United States for the last few years, has a very long history, a very robust history and has played a major role in American politics. And again, this history has been essentially eviscerated, extinguished, not talked about, not taught in the schools. But here we have a mayor about to become mayor of Buffalo, a socialist. People might not know, but a hundred years. Well, before we get to that next part, it is, it is something that isn't taught in schools. Um, I, I don't remember 
being taught about Eugene Debs getting uh, a million votes in 1912 against Woodrow Wilson. I don't remember that. That's does not. I don't remember them talking about the international workers of the world. There was a mention of Mother Jones. Um, I'm trying to think if there was. When you talk about MLK, they talk about his work as a civil rights activist, but not as an anti-war socialist. Uh, which is hilarious because you know pro-war capitalists love to quote MLK all the time. Uh, you know. I think they quote him just by going, I have a dream to kill all brown people across the world and steal their resources. I have a dream as MLK. You know, like that's how they contextualize quoting MLK. Um, but yeah, they just, it's, it's really not taught. And, and I think, I think now it's, you see, you see laws like the laws like we talked about in the last segment because it is becoming popular and they don't know how to stop it because now kids are able to do their research on their own and go, hey, why the fuck isn't this in the history textbooks? Um, and I think like some of the veil, um, is that the right term? The, the veil is coming off. Is that you guys get what I'm trying to say? I'm foreign. It's different. Let's keep going. <laughs> you guys understand what I'm trying to say. OK. So at various times between 1910 and 1916, socialists controlled the municipal governments in Schenectady, New York, Reading, Pennsylvania, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Dayton and Toledo, Ohio, Granite City, Illinois, Butte, Montana, Berkeley, California, and many other cities. The largest state chapter of the 100,000 strong Socialist Party under the leadership of Eugene Debs was in Oklahoma. Debs, the Socialist Party candidate for president, was sentenced to 10 years at hard labor at age 65 for giving a speech opposing the U.S. entrance into the war. He ran his presidential campaign from his prison cell, and he won nearly a million votes. That's in 1920. That's the... That's the exact same amount that he won in 1912. Uh, he ran for president several times, and each time he would get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. He took a train across the country. Uh, I think he called it the Red Express or something along those lines. Don't quote me on that, uh, but that that might be what he called it. But, you know, dude was in prison, and his sentence was commuted. By the way, I think he I think he was let out in 1921, 22, something like that. I might be. It was it was in the 20s. I know a sentence got commuted because they overturned a sedition act. Uh, and by basically saying, uh, hey, this thing is crazy. <laughs> do you guys do you guys know you guys wrote like a crazy law? Uh, and they were like, yeah. And they was like, do you, should we not have this law because it's too crazy? They're like, probably. So his sentence gets commuted, but he ran for, for president while he was in prison, uh, not just advocating for worker rights, but because he was in prison, he was advocating for prisoner rights. He was advocating for a complete retooling of the prison system itself. This is in 1920, the dude's talking about this. And he wins a million votes while he was in prison. So, I mean, could you imagine, could you imagine how well he would have done against a corporate racist Democrat candidate because the Democrats in the 20s were crazy racist. Look at Woodrow Wilson. Uh, who, if he would have legitimately gone up against them, how much he would have acted. Like, I think he would have gotten probably, I don't know, maybe 15, 20% of the votes. If he was able to run an actual campaign on par with a Democrat, you could ask that same question about the Green Party today. If the Green Party is given the exact same, uh, you know, finances and advertising and all of the resources that, the, that, that both the Republicans and the Democrats get, could you imagine how well they would do? Or the Libertarian Party or the, the Socialist Alternative Party or the SEP or the Party for Socialism and Liberation? If they all had equal footing, think of what these parties could do. 
But the reason they're not is because they're blocked because, you know, you look at the history and you look at someone like Eugene Debs and you go, wait a minute, a socialist got a million votes while he was running from prison. He got a million votes in 1912 against the popular Democrat that was backed up by the banks. He still won a million votes at that point. Well, gee, why aren't we? It seems like people want a socialist party in America. That would be the conclusion. Well, that's right. There's like a minute left. Socialists were a powerful influence in the labor movement. At least one third of the delegates of the 1911 AFL convention were socialists by conviction or party membership. And socialists exerted a dominant influence in four of the largest affiliates of the American Federation of Labor. Outside of the AFL, the mass membership Amalgamated Clothing Workers of America promoted socialism openly among its members. And even members of the syndicalist International Workers of the World, the Wobblies, who expressed antipathy to conventional politics, could be counted on to vote socialist when and where they were eligible to do so. I'm bringing this up because this is the socialist program. We bring it to you three times a week. We are part of the revival of socialism. We are part of the movement for social justice. And again, it's been a terrible crime that this history of socialism in the United States has been essentially extinguished or eviscerated during the anti-communist Cold War starting in 1945. Which which is what we uh, <laughs> talked about pretty extensively in the last segment. Um Yeah, so 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 there you there you go. Like there is a history of this. So her victory is part of this long history of um socialism in this country. But I wanted to look at some of her uh issues. And I like what she does on her website. Let me let me share that screen with you guys too so we can we can all look at it together. I like the way that she breaks it down. She breaks it down to short-term goals, near-term goals, and uh, long-term goals, right? So some of the stuff I like, uh, you know, short-term policy, remove police from responding to mental health calls and work with county and BPD leaders to establish a new crisis response mental health calls that utilize mental health professionals. Great. This is what the Defund the Police movement and the Black Lives Matter movement is talking about. Uh, and enforcement of low-level drug possession by directing police not to arrest people for simple possession of small amount of drugs and paraphernalia like syringes. This this could easily be shifted to um, you know decriminalizing drugs uh, on a large-scale level and doing what Portugal does, which is providing relief uh, and can counseling and you know like if people you know treating addiction like not like it's a disease but as a, as a response to trauma and understanding that there are, people need this for very specific reasons so you know they have psychologists that go and they hand you know addicts um better better drugs but more uh controlled doses if that makes sense like they give them a certain amount it's cleaner uh, they give them fresh needles. They collect the needles that they have used. Uh, so it's safer. They're not going to infect themselves. They're, they're you know, only doing a certain amount per day. Uh, and that amount isn't a lethal amount. It, they can help people wean it off. They have a methadone truck that goes to various different parts of so people are weaning off of drugs. They can do that. So this can lead to that. And, and I, and I hope that it does. Right. Um, so I, I do like some of her 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 short term goals, he, you know, work uh, something that's six months to a year. Work with Buffalo Common Council to amend the city charter to establish an independent oversight body with investigatory and subpoena power. Uh, that's great. Again, something that uh, the defund the police and Black Lives Matter movement have been talking about. Uh, train police officers in trauma informed care and implicit bias. Increase the number of trained community oriented officers, mandate unpaid leave for officers being investigated for police brutality, establish a civilian traf uh, traffic safety division, 
um, to enforce routine traffic safety laws and remove police from routine enforcement, uh, create a task force to investigate every police officer. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is basically like directly out of the, the Black Lives Matter to fund the police playbook. It's stuff that we've been talking about for a long time. Um, you know, and I think if we're, if you're going to retrain cops, I don't know if this is too extreme of a statement for me to make or not. I, I feel like it's not, maybe you, you have a different opinion and, and if you do, that's okay. I, I think if we're going to train police officers in trauma informed care, um, you have to get rid of the old guard because the training that they have been immersed in for as long as they have is difficult to undo. So even though you have trauma training, that training is not going to be in the forefront and they see somebody with, with a mental health issue and they're going to pull out their gun or taser or go, you know, uh, try to do some fucking wrestling move that ends up choking them out or something. Um, so I do think that it needs to be like you got to get rid of the old guard and put the new guard in place because the old guards old school training is going to kick in i think instinctively uh so i want to look at her housing some of her, her her housing policies a tenant bill of rights awesome awesome uh that's something that i think tenants need especially now right now that the moratoriums are going to be lifted and people are going to be uh kicked out uh, this is something landlord registration, create a, create and publicize a user-friendly online portal where tenants can type in a property address to get landlord information, including history of property violations, uh, require LLCs to disclose contact information, addresses of interested parties, increase regulations and requirement of property maintenance agencies. So that's, that's kind of great. Um, and the other thing too, is creating a, a user-friendly portal where they can get landlord information is awesome. Because, boy, howdy, do I wish I would have had that when I first got my apartment. Because my first apartment was a shithole uh, that turned out to <laughs> be a building that got condemned. <laughs> and it turns out my landlord has had various problems with this in the past, including two, two human rights violations. Because it, it, he, uh, he uh, uh, looked at some Chinese students that wanted to rent an apartment and he wanted to spray them with raid because he had heard that Chinese people carry cockroaches on them. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and if I would have had that, I would have looked that up and I would have been like, nah, I'm good, dog. <laughs> the search continues is, is what I would have said. Uh, but I did not. I did not. Um, a lot of her stuff, like, it, you know, provide one-time payment assist uh, for homeowners to get them back on track to pay their taxes, which would save many from unnecessary and devastating foreclosure. A lot of her housing policies are, um, are tenant focused, which I think is great because I think a lot of people's housing policies are about banking and loans. And that's not what it should be about. Um, I would love to see something on here about uh, helping the homeless. Uh, but unfortunately I don't see a lot of that on, on her site. Uh, if you look at her immigration, this is where I think we start to disagree. Uh, she's declaring Buffalo a sanctuary city. And, uh, oh, I, oh, I think I miss, I think I might've misread this part. When I first read, it, I was like, what? Uh, but it says end BPD cooperation with ICE as mayor. India will be transparent with immigrant communities by enacting written legislative policies that bars the information sharing between law enforcement and BPD and ICE customs border patrol. OK, that makes a lot more sense. I think I, I might have missed the word end BPD cooperation uh, with ICE because I was like, the fuck? what you talking about, lady? Uh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, you know, ensure all city agencies work for the needs of all residents, regardless of immigration status. That's huge. That's huge uh, for immigrants. Um, you know, like we they we need services as well as everybody else. Uh, sorry, it just started raining outside. Here we go. This is this I thought was cool. Dedicate funding for legal services that offer options to grant fee waivers for adjustments, adjustments of status fees, work permit fees, citizen fees, and deferred action uh, and DACA fees, right? So I am, um, I got that. That's how I kind of got my citizenship is I couldn't afford for a long, I mean, for a long time, that was part of the reason why I couldn't get my citizenship, even though I was eligible. Is just, I just didn't have the fucking 
money to do it. Uh, but there is a program that helps people skirt that. Basically, if you can prove that you've lived here for long enough, that you've been earning some kind of an income, um, but you're in poverty at that point in your life, uh, they will let go of that fee. So I like that she has that for work permits and DACA fees and status adjustment fees because all that shit adds up. So like people that that's the one thing people don't really know is all that shit, all that shit adds up. Um, you know, because what they're told about immigrants is that they just show up and start stealing things from Americans. And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Undocumented or otherwise we're not stealing shit from anybody in fact in order to become a legal citizen in this country it's expensive as fuck whereas you just you just kind of plopped out and here you go naturalization you get to vote and continue to be as ignorant and unlawful as you want right like but people that are against immigration don't fucking kind of see that kind of shit so the the uh, pointing out the financial burdens of being a citizen or, or like going through the the immigration and citizenship process uh, I, I'm glad she has that on her website. Um, my hope is that she upholds a lot of this. My hope is that she leans a little bit more into being a socialist and doesn't get co-opted by the Democratic Party uh, like AOC and Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and the squad and all those folks. Uh, because that's been a major disappointment to see. Uh, it, and and the reason why I think people have been really, really hard, particularly on AOC, is because she's gone back, you, you, wa walked back away from her roots uh, of democratic socialism, right? I, 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 I would say that I'm, I'm just a socialist. I don't put any sort of qualifiers around it for myself. Uh, but she does, and that's okay if that's what you want to do with that. Um, but, you know, it's... It, that's part of the disappointment. And I'm hoping that India Walton doesn't lean down that path. Um, I do want to try to get her on my podcast. I don't really talk to a lot of politicians on my podcast, but I do want to try to get her on Taboo Table Talk and, uh, and, 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 you know, see what, uh, what she says. Um, so uh, let me look at your comments. Cynical girl, welcome to the stream. <laughs> this Q co opt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm really hoping that I, I. You know, she's 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 a mayoral candidate, and I'm hoping that that is somewhat of a small enough um, office that the Democrats try not to fuck with her. Plus, it's Buffalo, and I don't really see the Democrats like trying to be in Buffalo. Not that Buffalo isn't a great city. I love Buffalo. Um, obviously haven't been there in quite some time but the last time i was there it was it was a really fun show uh and uh i like the city but you know it's it's a rust belt town that's not where democrats are going that's not where they can do their large fucking fundraisers and shit so i'm hoping they kind of just let her do what she needs to do and this becomes a trend this becomes a trend that we start seeing that we start seeing actual fucking socialists start running against the corporate Democrats. Um, we have a new mayor in Pittsburgh, and I'll, I'll be honest, I, did, I just don't know enough about Ed Ganey to, to say whether I like him or not. But, you know, we have, this is like the first black mayor in Pittsburgh. So that's kind of huge. Uh, I hope that he doesn't turn out to be a Democratic shill. Um, and, and part of the thing for me is I got to do my homework on the guy. Uh, we got one more comment from Brian. Brian says, I'm interested in learning more about treating mental illness as a response to trauma. Uh, Brian, if you look up Gabor Mate, he talks about this a lot. But basically what he says is you can you can look at addiction and a lot of mental health stuff as responses to trauma. Addiction specifically becomes a response to trauma. So if we look at it in that sense, uh, we can reframe the criminal justice system so that it doesn't imprison these people, further inducing more trauma on them, and then further and then further having them to go seek alcohol or drugs or various different types of addiction as a response to dealing with that trauma. 
uh and i think i mean i th just just and that's very that's me being very basic about uh about that uh but gabber mate w is is sort of the leading guy to talk about that and and you know there and i don't agree with them 100 percent of the time but he's pretty solid um on on those sorts of things so yeah i would i would look him up uh i'll put it in the comment section Uh, so you have a, a little bit of a reference there, uh, but he's great. I've I've talked about Gabor Mate uh, several times on various different shows, uh, and uh, and you know I I think he's he's on point with that sort of stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm I'm really hoping that she stands true to what she stands for, <laughs> uh, and 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 you know uh, I I wish her luck. Hopefully. I it's it's hard because I don't have a lot of faith in electoral politics. I just don't. I'm 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 not like the guy that's like voting will save everything. Like no, I'm like fucking general strikes will save it. <laughs> we need to show the oligarchs that the working class are, you know, who who run this shit. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.